Shalom. Call hello, Yahweh Bashim Al Bashai, Bahashem, Bakar Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the elder bishop. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth that be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners among the heathens that look like the heathens, the scattered elect. And to the Aquaf that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm coming at you with another lesson in truth. And uh, it's the, uh, the number two here in Chicago. Uh, the beloved mighty brother St. Benji was at the uh, Let the Young Men Play. You know, the young lions, they have the uh, the disciples camp to give the younger brothers a chance to, uh, every Friday, to give the younger brothers a chance to, you know, to, to, to get it in. And um, I was actually tempted to go because my, my afternoon opened up, but I decided not to. I don't want to go down there, you know, and, and get in the way. I want them to do what they were going to do because I know the spirit, the spirit was on me. I was watching and listening and, you know, made a couple comments and they went in on a subject matter that. It's actually one of my favorite subjects to go in on because it, it it hurts, it cuts the enemy so deeply when you do. All right, and um, and that's the subject of Edom, and you know, and people like Dr. Michael Brown is he's just so offended that he's being called an Edomite. Um, well, clearly your forefathers were too. That's why they've been ducking and dodging their true heritage, you know, for for you know for a millennium, for for almost two millennium. Since they became the Greeks and the Romans, all right? Since uh, Alexander of Macedon conquered Greece, and then they began to call themselves Grecians. Then they began to call themselves Romans, and then they've changed all the way up until now. Now they call themselves white or Caucasian, all right? Now, granted, you know, it isn't a color thing 100% the way people try to make it, because you got to remember many of our people are among them. There are lots of our people that look like so-called white people. All right, our people are scattered among all people. The um the scripture that I love to use to prove that point is I'm gonna go to two of my favorites. I'm gonna go to Baruch. All right, and and this is, this is in no way fashion saying that this is the the you know the position of every so-called white person, but many of our people, millions, are among them. We're we're the biggest nation on on the face of the earth, so we're we're scattered among all people. And especially when you when you think for 400 plus years, Edomite men were having their way with uh, women for five, actually 500 years because they did the same thing to the northern kingdom among the so-called Hispanics and natives. That's why they changed their look. And a lot of them don't look like they used to going back, you know, uh, 500 years ago. They were all of them were, were just as dark as so-called Negroes for the most part. All right. Um, but let's go to the book of Baruch. All right, let's go to the record in the Bible. And Baruch 2 and 30 reads, um, And I will, and for I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people, but in the land of their captivities they shall remember themselves. All right? Because we're scattered among all people. All right? Um, there's another one. I was actually. I have Baruch on my mind, but I was thinking of Tobit when it says we're scattered among them. I think it's Tobit uh, 13. Yeah, Tobit 13 and, and uh, 3. And it says, confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel, for he hath scattered us among them. All right, I started verse 2 just to get more. Actually, I started verse 1 just to get more context. And Tobit wrote a prayer of rejoicing and said, Blessed be the God that liveth forever, and blessed be his kingdom. His kingdom is the kingdom of Israel, not all men. It tells you that the the you know that it won't be left to any other people. All right? For he doth scourge and have mercy. He leadeth down to hell, which means he brings you into a low state. We're in hell right now. And he bringeth up again. When you're up, you're in your heaven. Who's on top in this society? And we're watching them lose their heaven. Right? Neither is there any that can avoid his hand. Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel. And we do that day in, day in and day out. Week in, week out. On the highways and byways and on, on, the, on the unicorn. All right? 
for he hath scattered us among them. So our people are scattered among all people. We get one more. One more precept. Then we're going to go into this uh, Zondervan's, which is Isaiah 16 and 4. So the Lord is a master chess player. But it says, let mine outcast dwell with thee, Moab. Moab are the Chinese. Be thou a covert to them from the face of the spoiler. So you can't just Moab, you can't get more out of Moab. It's so, <laughs> it, <laughs> that's hilarious because in Hebrew, the, the words are way different. It doesn't even, <laughs> but anyway, it says, uh, be thou a covert unto them uh, from the face of the spoiler who was Esau Edom. He was the spoiler. For the extortioner is at an end and the spoiler ceaseth and the oppression are consumed out of the land. So the Lord covertly hid Judites, so-called black people, among the Moabites. So what does that mean? They laid, they laid they seed in Moab, and so a lot of their children came out looking like Moab. Simple as that. Let's get to the book. So we're going to go straight to, uh, to Edom. So the two words we're going to look up is Edom an election because that that topic came up during the street teaching as I was listening to the uh, to the brothers as they was getting it in. So on page 142, uh, actually starting on page uh, 141, uh, it starts the Edomite uh, definition. OK, so I'm, matter of fact, I'll read some of it. The first paragraph on page 141, it reads. Edomites, Edom, red, all right? Didn't say nothing about white. They, remember, they self-proclaimed themselves white. All you have to do is look at any image of uh, uh, of Glenn Beck or uh, or you can look at the image of uh, uh, of Dr. Michael Brown and clearly see that uh, he's red, all right? Let's see. We'll open up another. Salakia. I want to open up another tab just to prove that point. There we go. My brother, I said, you know what? I'm just going to use Dr. Michael Brown. Because this PhD means nothing. All right? Yep, looking pretty red to me. So, let's see if we can make that bigger. Ah, oh, it didn't. All right, let's go back. Well,. All right. Does that look like a, a white man or a red man? All right. Red. And the first came out red. All right. And his PhD means absolutely nothing because the prophecies say completely, you know, a complete, give a complete different story from what his theology and the things that he says don't match up with scriptures. Okay, does not match up with the scriptures, my man. So let's get rid of him. Go back to the Zondervans. All right. There we go. So it says, uh, Edom, Edomites, the nation and its people who were the descendants of Esau, he founded the country, so his name is equated with Edom. Genesis 25, 30 through 36. The country was also called Seir or Mount Seir, which is the name of the territory in which the Edomites lived. And the Lord talks about prophesying to Mount Seir. All right. And that's what we do when we go on the highways and byways. There's many in you know, and through, all throughout the book of Ezekiel, Isaiah and Jeremiah talks about prophesying to Mount Seir. So we're going to go to the second pair, the bottom of the uh, first paragraph, second paragraph on, on page 142. 
And it reads, the Edomites rejoiced over the affliction of the Judeans and began to take over the southern part of Palestine. Eventually, they penetrated as far north as Hebron. This action intensified the already smoldering hatred between the, well, they got Jews. We're going to say the Judeans, the house of Judah, and the Edomites. All right. Psalms 137.7. Let's go to that. And then it has Ezekiel uh, 25, Amos 1 and 11. We're going to read all those scriptures. Let's go. Let's go to them. So let's go to the to the ultimate source, the Holy Scriptures themselves, the witness. And the first one was. Uh, what's the first one? Oh, Psalms 137. So let's go to Psalms 137, 7. And it reads, uh, matter of fact, I'm going to read all the way to, to, uh, uh, to, to, to uh, verse 9, all right? And it reads, Remember, O Yahweh, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof, meaning burn it, burn it down. They were rejoicing. O daughter of Babylon. So we know that this didn't happen in ancient Babylon. Ancient Babylon still stands. All right. The, uh, Iran is sitting in there today. Okay. So it's not talking about them. Who are to be destroyed. This, this is a future prophecy. As the scholars are going to solidify what the scriptures say. Opposite of what. Uh, the Edomite uh, Dr. Michael Brown says with his red self. All right. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happily shall he be that reward thee as thou hast served us. All right. Happy shall he be to take up and dash of thy little ones against the stone. That's a future prophecy that has not happened yet. That is the future of Esau Edom. All right. The next scripture was Ezekiel 25, 12 through 14. Okay. Because they say that the Edomites were done away with. But according to prophecy, they're done away with the land of Israel. I mean, they're done away with the inhabitants, the true inhabitants of the land of Israel, both the northern and southern kingdom. And there is no record of that happening yet. And, and if, when the Edomites are done away with, that means the kingdom of heaven has been established and all 12 tribes are in, back in the land of Israel and the, and the glory of the kingdom of heaven is, is ruling here on earth. So you see how, yeah, so all this ishness and, you know, it's not adding up. But let's go to Ezekiel. Twelve through fourteen, and it reads, "Thus saith the Lord, Power, because the Edom have dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance, and have greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Power, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom, and will cut off man and beast from it, and I will make it desolate from teeming, and they of the Dan shall fall by the sword." So I can't. <clears throat> And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, said the Lord Power. So that means that millions of Israelites would destroy millions of Edomites. There will be bones, relics, uh, stories, carvings, paintings, statues. There's no record of this because this is a future prophecy prophecy that has not happened yet this is a prophecy that's near all right this prophecy is not that far away in retrospect okay the next one was amos 1 and 11 let's go to the book of amos this is what the zondervan scholars are saying and i concur it says thus saith yahweh for three transgressions of edom and for four i will not turn away the punishment thereof because he did pursue his brother with the sword and cast and cast off all pity. His anger did tear perpetually and he kept his wrath forever. And when they stopped, uh, matter of fact, let me keep going. And But I will send fire upon Teman, which shall devour the places of Basra. So every place where Esau Edom is is spiritually Basra. And when Esau Edom, after slavery was over, after the transatlantic slave trade, 
which started with the so-called Hispanics and natives of the Americas being sent to Seville, Spain. All right. Uh, a hundred years before they were, uh, they were doing a, a, a triangle of slave trade going to the west coast of Africa to get the southern kingdom. They were doing a triangular uh, uh, back and forth slavery with the northern kingdom. So the triangular, the 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 uh, uh, the transatlantic slave trade. There was a hundred years more of it that they kind of leave out when they when they talk about it. All right, they don't they don't like to talk about the the native and the Indians as as they call them. Uh, slave trade that was going on before and at the same time, and sometimes they want ships together, which which uh, made which brought Jeremiah fifteen and thirty three to life when it says uh, Judah and Jerusalem were were oppressed together, they were being slave enslaved together, and, and a lot of people don't know about that history. That's why a lot of you know a lot of people just need to sh be quiet, take notes, listen and learn, do some research. But Amos one and eleven. Thus saith Yahweh, for three transgressions of Edom, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword, and did not cast off pity, and his anger did, did tear perpetually, and kept his wrath forever. So even after they stopped killing us, um, you know, after they stopped enslaving us, when then we just got, you know, then we just, uh, uh, we were being oppressed through their never-ending uh, um, uh, snares, through their financial and judicial system. They oppress us in other ways, all right? Preventing us from, you know, from owning too much, not allowing us to have uh, the same opportunities in the, in the land that we all uh, lived in, and that was definitely, the land was stolen from my people, and then my other men, then my people also built the land up. We pay taxes, you know, I'm native to this land and I, I got to pay for food, water, rent, you know, what was like the scripture said, you, they sell me back my own trees. I buy a table or a chair, it, it came off, off, off the land, which is mine, but yet I have to pay for it. All right. And I guarantee you probably about, you know, 90% of the furnitures, uh, companies here in America was owned by Edomites. All right. So, what was the next scripture uh, that they quoted? So, Obadiah 10 and 14. 10 through, so, Obadiah, which the whole book of Obadiah is very powerful. The whole book is just one chapter, but um, it's all about, the whole book is about the destruction of Edom. Obadiah 10, 1 and 10, and it reads, For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. And the day thou stoodest on the other side, and the day that the strangers carried away captives, his forces, and the foreigners entered into the gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was just one of them. All right. So when when they walked in, when they they when they went into uh and took away, you know, when Judah fled, some of them were, were murdered in the war, and those who who didn't get away went into captivity. But uh, Judah fled, you know, and um, you have to understand, they they weren't using. This is just a little additive. They 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 Judah, the house of Judah, was not using the Assyrian script of Hebrew. So that's just another point that uh, you know the Spirit revealed. These people using the Assyrian uh, script of Hebrew is just another. Because if you look on the cover of the Zondervan, they're showing you the Assyrian script. That was the the uh, the this, this, the uh, the uh, script of Hebrew, which was used by the Northern Kingdom when they were in captivity. So that's the 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 way that they were forced to to, to write when they were slaves. The House of Judah didn't go into that captivity and didn't use that language. And when you look at all the the relics of the House of Judah, which remain in Jerusalem. They were still, you know, the, the relics and the coins show that they were using the uh, the Phoenician or the Paleo Hebrew. All right. So and I've already explained that they which when I return to uh, i am still got the book in front of me, the. Uh, the view of the Hebrews, you know, or the tribes of the Israel of Israel in America by Ethan Smith, you know, all the relics that were found in the Americas when the northern kingdom got free. They started writing in the Paleo and the Phoenician again. 
So once again, the fact that these people, uh, uh, the reason that they use, and I'm speaking as a man when I say this portion, but the reason that they use the script of Hebrew that you're looking at on this on on the on this on the uh, Zonovan's book is because all these books that have been written in the 16, 17, and 18 hundreds declaring the natives being Israelites, if they would have uh, taught the, the the modern day Israelis to read and write in the paleo, that would have made the connection and therefore made them guilty and made everyone know. You understand? So they so they hit it by using this form of Hebrew. Which the uh and what and what's them claiming to be the Jews? Well, the Jews never use that form of Hebrew. So Esau's just exposed up and down, sideways, back and forth. It's over. You know, stop. I I always tell you when they tell me, well, what am I supposed to do? Uh, you know, I, I always tell these Edomites, enjoy your time you got left. Enjoy the the little bit of privilege that you have left because your own people are taking that from you. You know the the elites with their oppressive uh, plans that they're that they're bringing. So enjoy these last moments of, the, of, the, of your white privilege. That's what you should be doing. All right. Back into Obadiah, um, verse uh, eleven. No, verse twelve. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou, thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither should thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yet thou should have not looked upon their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Neither shouldst thou have not stood in a crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. So Edom has to pay for these things. Now let's go back into the Zondervans and finish it out. All right. And we'll jump down uh, to the next paragraph. It says, also on page 142, Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as a scene of great future judgment. See notably Isaiah 34, 5 and 6, right? Which talks about how Edom would prescribe the uh the holy land to themselves all right so th these are very very uh, uh 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 this is some damning condemning evidence scriptural evidence and prophecy all right then it says also isaiah 63 and 1 she is the only neighbor of the israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from god so the so the edomites are not promised mercy and isaiah 63 30 i mean isaiah 34 I mean, 35, 5 and 6, and then uh, in Isaiah 63, um, 1 through 5, make it clear that who the world ignorantly calls uh, Jesus Christ returns to a world, yeah, that's Isaiah 34, 5 through 6, but who the world ignorantly calls uh, uh, Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai, returns to a world that is ruled by Esau, Edom. All right. And the, and it also tells you that these people have so, uh, have subscribed the land of the Lord to themselves. So with that, all praises going honor be unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakakadash, Wa Ababa, Kwam, Yasharala, Shalom.